Hey everyone, Steadfast here. I have a new deck to show off today. My current favorite deck by far, Amber Ruby Midrange. But before we get to that, have you seen this brand new Lorcana card? Pretty crazy stuff, right? An action that has no cost at all seems like an easy choice to me. All right, enough of that. Let's talk about Amber Ruby. This is a deck I thought up a couple weeks back and have been loving ever since. And over the last week or so, the deck has proven to be quite the capable force throughout its development. I showed the list to Ducky, a great top player, especially known for his love of Amber and mid-range decks, and he helped me bring this deck to new heights. And although we both think that even more development is possible for the deck, it's clearly a dangerous contender in the format. So I'm excited to show off our deck in this video with a ton of gameplay from both me and Ducky. Shown here is the strong early deck list that you'll see played here in the following matches. We took the list to the Pixelborn ladder as well as tested in a few matches against each other. And at the end of the video, I'll show off a more final version of the deck that we landed on after a week of playtesting. Now, let me give a quick overview and introduction to the deck and how it works. The amber and ruby ink colors are a natural pairing despite their lack of popularity up until now. However, I suspect that may be changing soon. Amber, as always, provides strong card draw with Rapunzel and Surfer Stitch, who also serve as strong questers with formidable willpower. Amber also provides incredible character ramp with Lantern and character recursion with Hades. In particular, this deck really shows off the strength of that Hades loop, perhaps more than any other list. And meanwhile, Ruby brings in powerful removal characters like Maui and Monstrous Dragon. These are strong by their own right, but are also great targets for the aforementioned Rapunzel and Hades. Combined, these key cards create a strong deck identity of smooth and effective combos that often result in valuable card advantage and solid board presence. Add in other cards like Shield, LeFou, Tigger, and Be Prepared, and you'll already begin to see many lines of play weaving together. These Ruby cards complement Amber and give the list an effective toolkit against many strong decks, strategies, and board positions. As an overall list, this deck consists of a solid core of cards with the ability to add in a few different packages as needed. This core list is vital to the deck and really brings it to life as a strong mid-range list. But as for additional cards and packages to consider, against aggro, I'm a big fan of the Aladdins, especially considering that with Lanterns, you can often shift out the big Aladdin on turn four. But if you want more consistency, you can also throw in Gaston who can defeat Cusco. Against Control, the Amber LeFou creates a ton of early pressure, often demanding a response from the three cost Maleficent, which opens opportunity for the Challenge plus Rapunzel follow-up. Shield and LeFou are also great in the Control matchup, as you can ready up characters against opponent Aladdins, or set up a Be Prepared Sing after questing or getting hit by Elsa. Against Evasives, Goofy and Tigger are your bread and butter, as well as Dragonfire, although I wouldn't max them out completely since they're uninkable. These are just a few options the deck has, but for now we'll play some games with this early list as we show off the core deck strategy. There are a few other versions of Amber Ruby, like the Mulan or Rockstar Stitch focused lists that I've shown previously on stream. But as I played beefy mid-range decks such as Amber Sapphire, I realized that with a few changes, Ruby can complement Amber just as well if not better than Sapphire. And my suspicions were right. Once I realized the strength and potential of the deck, I wanted to test it further, so I brought it to Ducky. I knew he'd enjoy the playstyle of the deck, and after playing and testing all day, we hopped on a call to discuss the deck before jumping into some more games. So I want to give a big thanks to Ducky for joining me on this video and helping me develop the deck. He continues to innovate and push every deck he touches, so make sure to tune into his stream and follow him over on Twitch. I'm sure he'll take this deck for a spin if you ask if he isn't playing it already. All right, and with that, let's jump into some games. But first, I'll let you hear Ducky's quick thoughts on the deck after trying it for the first time, and then we'll jump into some games after. First, on the ladder on his account, and then into a few matches where we faced off against each other to test the deck's more formidable matchups. So Ducky, yesterday I gave you this deck. I said you, I thought you might like it, and I think we chatted for like three minutes, and you were like, let me cook and you went live immediately <laughs> and uh on your main account your rank one account and then ended up going like 21 and four or something and the, i don't even think the deck is like fully polished i think it still has some room to grow but 
even within that 21 and four, like we were testing things. So give me your first th thoughts about, you know, Amber, Ruby, mid range. Dude, this deck <laughs> is gas. Like, okay, so when you first sent this to me, I was just like, steadfast, this is like barely workable. We might have to do some things with it. It like, I don't know if this is going to be competitive. And then I took it into ladder and I was like, wait, hold up a moment. There's actually something here. Wait, how is this even working? Um, steadfast, you mad genius. <laughs> so that's that's really my first reaction is like, there's actually something here. And it's uh, it's actually quite, um, quite fascinating how well this deck works. I'm a big fan. It's also just like exciting to see something new because you played so many games with um with uh like amber steel or ruby amethyst or amber sapphire it's just like something fresh is is really awesome oh well then um speaking of fresh <laughs> that's a good hand we got some we got some <laughs> good ones over here uh i'm down to just get rid of these two i want more inkables uh and then i want something to trade out for that uh that shield um, because I just want something bigger and beefier, uh, which is what we got in uh, a Maui. So we're probably looking to ink the, the shield and the stitch, and then we're looking to, to play the lantern on uh, on two, and then maybe go lantern into Mickey on three, and then uh, transition to Maui on, on four, and then uh, surface stitch on five, which is kind of a nutty curve. If you think yeah, the double that. lantern stitch on five. Yeah. So talk me through your choice to hold the um, the small stitch. Is that just because you'd rather keep it for ink until you see what they're playing or what? Uh, so if they're aggressive, I can also go lantern into turn uh, uh, turn two stitch to reply to what they're doing. Right. You can play it turn two without consequence of not playing it turn one, right? Precisely. Um, and since I we don't respect grandmas in this household, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's just... It's just not an, uh, a a strong threat earlier on. I am down to just go with the continue with the the Mickey plan that we've established before. Yeah. So this will be very interesting because we can play the Mickey and then bait in the fill attack, and then we can hit him with the Maui and then just crush their board afterwards. Um, so in this spot, I'm going to go Lantern. I'm going to ink the be our guest. Um, it's either that or Dragon. It, yeah, it's either that or dragon. I actually think it's the dragon here, actually, uh, because the beer guest could also become a Rapunzel later on. So that's just something that I want to consider. Um, so I'm down to ink the dragon. And then we establish our Mickey. And then we pass. We might just ink, end up inking our beer, I guess, anyways, yeah. simply just because of the way our hands shaped up. So they're playing Amber, they're playing Amber Sapphire with Grandma. I don't think this version is as good as the other ones. This one definitely feels very fast. So I am actually down to ink this be our guest and then play this maui because i actually anticipate this maui being um they can't deal with it with their characters easily yeah, yeah. being got quickly because like i think that this this trades here um the question is if i want to attack into this tall and i don't think so simply because of the possibility of us getting got by a surfer stitch next turn but if they do offer up the tall next turn i will take it especially if they take this trade with the the stitch um, but it will most likely be with this Maui. I think they inked two copies of Let It Go, which is good for us. That is quite good for us, actually. Because this this means that they probably don't have um, surfer. a yeah. surfer in hand, yes. Which begs the question: What do they have in hand? Yeah, it's not it's not Surfer, it's not Rapunzel. <laughs> unclear. <laughs> yeah, it's very unclear what they have here. Um, it could be a. It, it might be Hades. Like they wanted to attack him with Tala, to get them to seven next turn. Well, I mean, 
right? We, we, we get them. We show them the business. Yeah, show them the, eh? show them the business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to show, show them the business here. <laughs> we just get them real good. And then we can see what they had in their hand after all. Yeah, it was Hades. <laughs> Hades and Rapunzel. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we read the Hades quite nicely. Um, I'm actually down to just sit. Um, I don't think we're under any pressure, really. And, like, I don't... Like, Surface Stitch isn't a problem. And they can attack into us again. That's fine. Yeah, I'm down to pass this turn. <laughs> Look at him staring at his card. <laughs> Yeah, they're just probably very unhappy at this point. Yeah, and you got to keep in mind he could have those you have forgotten me's as well. So that's yep. another another reason to sit to not be afraid to sit on some turns. Ah, uh, this uh, <laughs> yeah. this very unfortunate um card this, right here. Stinks. Um, we do we have to be scared of a little bit of pressure here? I don't know if we do. So I'm actually down to hit here. And then um, if they want to trade into us, that's they're more than welcome to. We just essentially 3-4-1 them. But uh, I'm okay to just sit again because I definitely want to be able to... Our win condition is to be able to get the surface stitch online. Right. Uh, I think yeah. sit because okay. trading or questing with Mickey just... He's going to be gone. Ooh. That's perfectly fine with us. We had two cards we didn't want anyways. Yep. That is fine. We just play this and we pass. It would have been nice as an uh, as an inkable, but I mean, <laughs> this deck is just absolute gas. What can I say? The, we have four in the inkwell, <laughs> and we forgot to play two stitches, two surfaces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And uh, and if we ever rip a, um, and I think this is the point where we can start attacking with this uh, yeah. with this um, Mickey Mouse and turn the quarter. We don't need the Mickey Mouse anymore. Oh, uh, we are playing into Rapunzel, but like they are top decking. They've already played two Rapunzels. The likelihood of them having it is very low. Uh, and if they draw uh, uh, the Rapunzel here, they're a a god or a goddess. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just got punished. We got just so punished. It's okay. They're going to play or ink something and we can... You have forgotten me. Yep. Or we can play um, another Surface Stitch. Yep. Which is more likely the uh, the situation here. But I think you I think you quest there no matter what. Like, the the chances they'll draw one of their two or three remaining Rapunzel's top deck is pretty low. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could have hedged, but we definitely still need to close the, the gap here because they yeah. are ahead on on lore. Okay, well, we're just going to stop the parade of surface stitches. And, um, question is, do we want to ink here or not? And I think I am down to ink something but i'm not quite sure what it is it's probably the shield or the the, the br guest and i think it's the br guest here because i think we're going to just be drawing more gas later on yeah i think lefou's um, worth lefou's worth keeping mm -hmm, for sure um so then the, our next question is what are we hitting into and i think it's some combination of this plus this i think phil for sure yep and then um like they're going to be the aggressor and then we're going to be the defenders in this spot um, but we should be able to clear that board relatively soon because they are actually not putting on that much pressure against us. So we might just, you know, have this conga line of, uh, of stitches be able to get us there. Ooh, surface stitch. Oh, sorry, rockstar stitch. Okay, so here's something interesting we can do. We can use LeFou or um, uh, Shield to be able to ready the symbol. So yep. we can attack in. So hopefully he quests <laughs> with the stitch. He does. He's a little. Hmm. It's a little awkward to take him out though. It's another business opportunity here. Yes. Um. There is another business opportunity here. Uh. How do I want to do this? He's at thirteen. He's at thirteen. Uh, lore. So I do think mm -hmm. we need to deal with the board. I, I do believe so as well too. 
But the question is, do can we deal with the board and show them the business? Because <laughs> I don't know about you, but I I do enjoy these business opportunities. Um. You know what? Let's do it. Let's let's just let's just let's just show them the business. I think that's probably the best play. Do you do you like the idea of playing shield here or holding it? I like establishing the Mickey here just to get on board even harder. Um, yeah. I, I just want I just want to start pressuring them. Like uh, I don't see ourselves. Yeah, he's gonna start oh. drawing into his other Hades and stuff. So. Exactly. So I just want to start pressuring the board as much as possible and just closing out this race. Um and not letting them get to the point where um, they can just like counter swing us back. Okay. Well, it begins, I suppose. Okay. Um, and I'm okay with just sending all the clowns in. Yeah. And then and there's a, a question of if we want to ink the stitch or put it onto the board as pressure. And I actually think the answer is um, ink the stitch. So here's why. Um, if they attack in with the flounder and kill our stitch, we can draw an, uh, an inkable and then that will be able to let us go Hades, buy back the stitch that just died and then, um, and then replay it again. So even though it's nice as, and it also playing onto the board doesn't change our clock. So I actually really enjoy being able to just go even. Uh, <laughs> that may have been the reason why to keep <laughs> that. But I think in this situation, we're yeah. still fine. Like, no, yeah. we're, we're... <laughs> your... we just got super punished. It's okay. Your, your point was when you're making those decisions, like you have to keep in mind the, the, the discounts, the lanterns get you and you can start finding those routes like that. Um, but he did top deck. He did top deck the uh, you forgot me, but it didn't matter. Yeah, and I think <laughs> in that spot, like even if we were playing around the you have forgotten me, it's okay to play into it a little bit because if they draw the you have forgotten me, they're losing that spot anyways. So yeah, it it didn't really matter that we got got by it. Besides, you know, comedic value. Oh, it's a great top deck. Great ending <laughs> to the game. <laughs> <laughs> a hilarious closer, if you will. Yeah. I do think it feels like a, it feels like Amber Sapphire with a bit more spice, like running Lantern as your sort of ramp tool instead of the, the Detective Mickey. It just gives you so much more flexibility into going into the mid game. Um, and it allows you to play characters that you normally wouldn't run in Amber deck, like even within the Amber color, like regardless of, of Ruby, um, which is interesting because there, there have been so many lantern list so far but just that inclusion of maui and lefou and things unlock a lot of potential for the amber so it's pretty fun Ooh. we drew some nice ones i would like to draw another uninkable please or inkable next turn uh one thing that i have noticed in this deck that is uh there's actually quite a few uninkables in this deck so like your chances of drawing in um inkable off the top of the deck uh to be able to fill out your curve is lower and I'm definitely feeling that. This is definitely on the higher end of... Uh, yeah. Of your preference. Of my preference, yeah. I think I think maybe... And we've been running a few slightly different lists between you and I. I think you might have around 14. I kind of am in favor of shaving off like one Be Prepared, maybe one Dragonfire going down to like 11, 12. I can shave for Dragonfire. Maybe that's something we, we, we talk about and sort of polish a bit. I'm actually down to shave a Dragonfire and play another Maleficent. Um, 
So I definitely think that this is an inking here situation. The question is, do we want to slam a Maui and then proceed with beating down with the aerial? And I believe the answer is yes, we do. Thank you very much, Tala, for your service. All right, that's one rule puzzle stack. I don't know if we will we, we want to peel one. I, I want to try and get anywhere from two to three usually off of Rapunzel's. Um, so hopefully they'll give us an opportunity to do with this founder. But like, look at the board. Like, look, at, this is your turn four board. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at how fat these characters are. Like, yeah. just Maui's just big. Like, oh, that's a nice, uh, that's a nice Maleficent. It just pairs up, you know, so nicely against my, uh, my Maui here. And I wonder if they're contemplating running this flounder into my uh, my Maui here. Oh, that's interesting. So they're because of them hitting aerial, it makes me think they're playing uh, steel, right? They could be on steel. Uh, I saw a Tomato, so steel is a likely uh, one amber yeah. and um, uh, amber and ruby are also viable as well too. I think that this is a, if, if I had to hedge, I would say probably steel is the closest thing, but I definitely think this is just a easy Rapunzel angle. Yeah. There's a few different things you could have done, but I think that's just the best. Mm -hmm. You can even play your second lantern if you want to give up the, be our guess. Yeah, I'm down. Um, Simply because I just want to get this lantern down, and then if we really need to card draw, we can always just loop back this this Rapunzel and just keep drawing cards. So the question is, do we swing? Eh, I'm scared. I'm a scared little boy. I th I'm pretty sure they have like a smash or a grab your sword or something if they're playing steel. Mm -hmm. uh, but they could also be on um, on amber, and I don't want to get punished by. I don't want to get it punished right. by Rapunzel. Rapunzel. So I might as well play around it. Because it has, you know, the resident Amber player. I have to respect Rapunzel. We can't feed her. I wonder what they have. They're playing that they're playing that four cost Melissa, and I actually think it's pretty good. I mean, it does a very good voiceless aerial impression. So Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Marie. Yeah, it's definitely item stack. Yeah. We saw Tematoa and Maurice. Okay. How do we want to do this? I wonder why they did that. I guess they just want the lore on board. But I'm not just asking for Maui plus Rapunzel. I know, I know we don't have it, but... So we're definitely doing this. This is just non-negotiable. Um, I mean, there's an argument for attacking in the Rapunzel in for, uh, to try and weaken our Rapunzel so that we can kill it off to buy back with Hades. Um, but I actually don't. You could just drag and fire Maurice. Get him out of here. Yeah, I think that, that I like that a lot. So, uh, cause like they probably have a bunch of items trapped in hand. And if that's the case, then we're just very, very yeah. happy to just sit here. And I think that right there is an example of like, a good example of this deck it's like you have board control because you're threatening the rapunzel heals but then also you can just dragon fire like <laughs> that's something you don't i mean you see it in amber sapphire right right with like let it go mm -hmm. but the maui just adds another dynamic to it oh please kill my rapunzel please kill it please kill my rapunzel <laughs> <laughs> i'm begging you opponent D ducky ducky loves reviving rapunzel's with hades yes it's his favorite all right we're going to uh show our opponents the business i wonder why he didn't kill the rapunzel though i mean uh, i mean unless he is thinking that you have the hades but yeah i don't know but i think we can 
sit here. I, I'm down to ink this actually, because I don't think we're ever playing this. It's blue red, by the way. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, hmm. which is, it's a fun deck. I like it a lot. I don't think it's as strong as others, but. I mean, it's a, it looks like the Tomato blue red deck. Um, yeah. Which is fun. Yes. Yes. You did it, opponent. You fed us. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm down to play these. And this was actually like kind of what we saw yesterday as well too, where we just like. Oh yeah, we did this probably what ten times yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all these goodies. I'm okay with thinking this because we're just gonna keep the train running. Yeah. What's cool about the Hades is that like they act as second copies of like Surfer Stitch and Rapunzel in this deck uh, quite often since you can see, it, especially since you can see multiples of them, you, you can just use them to keep looping card advantage and then use your final copy to be able to to, to uh, enable the Hades loop. And the Hades loop also lets you establish boards for, um, for the Surfer Stitches as well too. So just a lot of really, really strong synergies with that card advantage engine. Oh gosh, I feel like I'm gonna get bodied. <laughs> I have oh, a distinct no. feeling I'm going to get bodied by no. this deck. You have just so many good cards against me. It's like kind of ridiculous how many good cards you have against me. I'm okay with getting rid of these. Do I want to play a faster game or a slower game? Actually, I think I have to be aggressive relatively, but like I also just get punished for my aggression really easily. So I will do this. All right. Cool. All right, I'm going first. I'm already. All right, let's see what you got, sir. I'm already quaking in my boots. You're quaking? <laughs> yes, I'm just so scared. It's not that scary. <laughs> you kidding me? Like, I can't beat a Maui. It's like one of the hardest cards for me to beat already. Oh, and there's a lantern already? I'm dead. I'm already dead. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, I'm going to ink this and I'll play this. Oh. Oh, the hard cast. Yup. And I think it's actually this. Hmm. Interesting. Yo, you're giving me something to smash? I'm smashing that. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> what is this? Oh man, I, I thought this was friendly. <laughs> I have a tough choice here. Gosh, steadfast. You're so disrespectful. Um, you you smashed the first Mickey. What was I supposed <laughs> to do? Like, I, I'm I'm so scared. <laughs> Wait, there's multiple Mickeys. What is this? All right, I run four. Okay, time to show you the business. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready, I guess. Oh, oh, 
There's so many ways I can show you the business. Oh, let me count God. the ways. Let me count the ways. <laughs> Here we go. All right, we'll start with this one. I knew that. Swords, yep. All right, and I'm down to I'm down to pass here. Hmm. Oh no. Wait. I did not anticipate this. Okay, I gotta hold this for reasons. <laughs> Till I'll say. Oh no. I'm in danger. <laughs> Dude, imagine the turn four I mean... Tink Swords not being good against this deck. No! That's crazy. That's so insane. Oh, it's like the no. best turn four. <laughs> How? <sighs> like, I, I'm guessing you have a puzzle in hand. You have to. And just like. Hey, at least Beast gets another valuable target if this becomes meta. <laughs> yep. Blowing up Volantras is actually pretty good. Unfortunately, I do not have Rapunzel. Oh, you don't have the Rapunzel. Thank God. <laughs> oh. I'll play that. Oh, you just had to be rude, didn't you? You know what? I'm down. All right. Ugh. Hmm. It's a bit risky. There's my fourth Mickey. <laughs> oh, steadfast. When will you learn? Uh, no. When will you <laughs> learn? I, I, look, I had to the ink. The business is here. I had to ink, okay? <laughs> okay, I, I have to do this. Please don't draw a puzzle. Please. Oh. I beg you, one time. <laughs> oh, thank God. Yeah. Okay, we have some options here. We will play this. Draw this. We'll play this. Pass. Now, I don't think I'm winning here, but give it the good old college try. Hmm. I think you might oh. be winning here. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> well, I mean, in before be prepared. Right. Hmm. That's a pretty good card. Oh, that's not good for me. And that's putting it lightly. Um. Yeah, I could have played the other one, but this felt better. Of course. Of course it feels better. Winning feels good. Oh, uh, what do I do about this Maui? You have Smash? <laughs> no. I have to get it off the board. Because, like, Rapunzel is just too scary. Hmm. 
Man, my hand is pretty bad. I'm guessing be prepared plus like dragon fire or some some something like no. that. Take this. Be prepared would actually be pretty good. No, uh -oh. if I had be prepared, I would have played it. Assuming you know, since I had that inkable stitch there, but. Oh. Uh uh, do I commit to this board here? I do. Got that doggy. Stitch attack. Uh oh. Well, I guess we're sitting. Um, I'm okay with inking this right now. Now I'll pass. Stitch attack. Aladdin? No! So I was sitting on that stitch for so long. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, better lucky than good, right? There it is. Oh man, this is where I'm gonna misplay, I think. <laughs> Say it ain't so. Oh no. This is already not good. Hmm. What do you hear, Ducky? Um, as your opponent, I recommend you to swing all out. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, never mind what's in my hand. <laughs> oh, you didn't swing all out. How unfortunate. I actually think this is the play here, strangely enough. Or is it? Yeah, I'll play this. Then we can just sit and stare at each other. Hiya. Stitch attack. Oh no. It begins. Oh, you ink one of those? Oh, that can't be a good sign. Um. I think I'm dead. I, I, have a, I have a distinct feeling that I'm just dead. Oh no. <laughs> My dude, why? <laughs> I had to. I'm in pain. I'm in pain. Ugh. How do I win? Oh wait! And you have the follow-up too? No! <laughs> no lanterns required, sir. Oh, that's so bad. That is so bad for me. I think that's correct.
No, you have the fourth one. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I keep getting wrecked by this card. How? I think I just slammed the stitch there. Yes, you do. Yes, you do indeed. If I win this game, we're never playing again, okay? Oh, gosh. You're just gonna have an undefeated record against me? I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand why I'm losing this game, but like, also, part of my brain just can't comprehend it. That's rude, man. I'm a decent player. <laughs> I mean, you are. <laughs> you really are. It's definitely being showcased today. It isn't because I'm getting punished left and right for my insolence. Oh god. Alright. Oh, the humanity. Like, uh, this Maui is just like, so disrespectful. And then now you start the Rapunzel trains? Oh no, like, I'm just getting out Rapunzel. Yeah, I mean, there was a point where we both had like no cards in our hand and that I found the Rapunzels. But I do think it's a good showcase of the matchup. Yeah, I know you've had, you've had that for how long in your hand? a while huh uh which one Your, the, the, rapunzel. the rapunzel yeah uh oh, for a little while um i yeah. didn't have it for a very long time we need yeah you may need to call an ambulance for me <laughs> I think I just do that. Please, well, when will this ever stop? The, the train, it never stops. All right, that's game, I think. I got two Aladdins in my hand. I could have done that instead, but I thought the, I thought I might as well do Surfer Stitch. <laughs> you might have just bear with me in card advantage. Oh, the Maui's are just so difficult to play against. Like, I don't understand how to like work around it. Um, I did manage to find all all four of them. Yeah. Yeah, like if you can like whip Ducky with this deck, like. This means like this deck is like a pretty big contender for for like I would even say even tournament play. It definitely yeah. needs a little bit more polishing, but um I definitely think that this this deck has a lot of teeth. Okay, so let's jump into another game. Let's um what if I play I, I mean I would love to practice that matchup more, but what if I switch to um Emerald Amethyst Tempo Aggro type list and you switch to the um the amber ruby sounds good all right oh i got first again <laughs> it's my lucky day oh must <laughs> be nice must be nice okay i'm down to do this we don't need two of these Do this.
Rut row. Pascal's the perfect card in this deck because he's green and purple. <laughs> yup. I might be in a little bit of trouble. Given the texture of my hand. Well, you'll be pleased to know that I do not have a two drop. <laughs> okay. Oh, thanks. So that's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so good for me but you know neither do i <laughs> <laughs> oh no lantern no lantern it's good yeah so you and i and we're just gonna sit here and stare <sighs> wait if you don't have a two drop that means your hand is just absolutely cracked oh no wait wait i have regrets now he thought he could quest. Uh. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this is what happens when you don't draw lanterns. Nice. Got it. All right, doing my aggro things, back to you. What to do, what to do? Ducky, this is a video about how good Amber Ruby is, okay? Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm in a bit of a dilemma here. Uh, cause like, how do we survive is the question. I think the answer is this. It's just a little too late for that. Is this a Cusco angle? This feels like a Cusco angle. Dude. My board. My hand, it's empty. Almost. Um. Surely you don't have two copies of You Have Forgotten Me. Yeah, that was pretty rough. Like, if you had had Lantern on board already, then you could, you know, set up the um, the Maui and stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to. I, I I'm in a rough spot. Oh, I inked the wrong thing. Oh, uh, I need I needed to play that instead of inking it. Here. That's okay. If we need to, we can run it back. Yeah. Hmm. 18 on board. Kill this. Make this in the past. Oh, oh no. We are in danger. I think it's this. Get the be prepared. Yep, I have to be prepared. Nice. Do you have a Cusco? I wish I did. Yeah, I was thinking about 
holding that Cheshire cat, not commit too hard. Might have been wise. Mm -hmm. Pascal, no. Oh, no. Get out of here, Aladdin. Yeah. This is where, you, hey, Ducky, this is why you need cut to the chase. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is why, why, where we really need cut to the chase, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm down to concede this one. Um, run it back? Yeah, let's run it back. Because uh, I think, like, that was actually a pretty poor showing for both decks. Yeah. Because, like, we both just kind of didn't come out of the gate very well. All right, okay. This is one where I get to go first. And I can have something to play on at the very least early. Hmm. Um down to get rid of all of these, try and find some good up cards. Cool. Is this a hand? Alright. Do I even play anything here is the question. Like, weirdly enough, I don't think I do. Because, like, what am I going to do with this Pascal? Stare at it? Right. Like, you're going to have a 2-drop. It's going to be a Flynn. I'm okay with inking this to this spot. I don't think we're ever getting here. Flynn's so good, man. It's like, obviously the discard, but even like here, it's like, if you, even if you have Rapunzel, you can only draw one, right? Oof. This, I do think it's this. Then, what do we do here? Down to do this. As to what do I do next? I'm not quite sure. Because I think I have to ink something, but I'm not exactly sure what I want to ink. And I think I ink this. I'll play this. Um. Uh, let's see here. What do I want to take here? I think I want to take this. This one right here. Guys. Nice. Okay. Disgusting. Hmm. 
All right, time time to start the counter attack. Does. No, Cusco, please, mercy. All right, the race is on. The Simba is quite annoying. Yeah, the Simba actually is putting in work here because, like, the Mickey allows me to, to keep brushing here. Yeah. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> oh boy, you're gonna like this. Oh, what is your hand? <laughs> oh no, that can't be good. I was excited about that hand, okay? That can't be good. Befuddle broken. We'll see if that works out. I mean, I hope so. It's um I'm in a little bit of trouble here. I like playing this. Question is, what do I buy back? Do I need pressure or do I need um, Maui? I think I need pressure here. Question is, do I already play the Simba or not? I don't think I do. I don't think it's not. It's enough impact. Assume you might have another be prepared. We'll see. Nope. Not be prepared, but you know, something. Be something. Pretty good. I regret not keeping that Maui. Maybe so. No! My face! My <laughs> all of me. And I think I'm dead. Whew. All right. There it is. There it is. Man, that's... Weakness of this deck. The Simba did go hard, though. Like, So I think if we're thinking about how to improve the Amber Ruby, like, I mean, I don't know if we should, like, go too hard on it, but it's certainly a consideration, right? Yeah. Like, if you want to, like, like remove, like, a Dragonfire, for example. Like, I felt like the Dragonfires were a little bit awkward in this deck. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, like, even in all the other matchups, like, I didn't feel like... I needed like that many dragon fires 
Um, I think that the number be prepared is fine. Um, and like the uninkable ability of some of these cards is like starting to show. All right, I hope you enjoyed all of those games. Honestly, we had a blast playing this deck and recording all those matches. Here's a look at a more current list of Amber Ruby midrange. One of the bigger weaknesses identified early on were against aggro decks, so you'll see a bit more focus on a flexible early game and some streamlined numbers. Gaston helps against Emerald, Amber LeFou pressures control, and Goofy adds another defense against evasives. Again, big thanks to Ducky for jumping on board this video. Make sure to go check out his Twitch channel or hit him up in my Discord if you have any questions for him. So what's next for Amber Ruby? I think a more detailed guide could be on the horizon as I certainly intend to play this deck a ton more, including at tournaments. So if you want to hear more about this deck, future list changes, and more details like specific matchups, tech options, mulligan strategy, and more, let me know in the comments. With that said, perhaps you'd rather see me break down a different deck entirely, so let me know about that as well. As always, thanks everyone for watching. Make sure to subscribe and support Lorcana and other Lorcana content creators. See you next time. Peace.